Hello everyone, welcome to another how-to video. This one will be about working with EDB files. And if you don't know what an EDB file is, uh, this is the way to pre-populate your Blackboard in ClassN to load pictures and images uh, or text onto your Blackboard very quickly so you don't have to pull things and upload things as you teach. So it's a way to prepare beforehand to make sure you have lots of interesting content on your Blackboard as you start class. So if you know the basics of this already, you might want to skip ahead to the end where I have a few tips and tricks that will make your EDB files even better. If you don't know how to make one, then go ahead and watch this whole video because you'll learn the basics. So let's start with importing text and pictures. Now, you, you know, you can obviously add text using this the text feature here. Um, and anything that you add this way will be will load on an EDB file normally, but there's no way to lock it. If you see there's this little uh, lock here, there's no way to lock this. So it's always able to be deleted. So maybe you want to insert some text that cannot be deleted, that students might not accidentally, or you, teacher, might not accidentally delete. So for that, you're going to want to import text in. The easy way to do that is to use some kind of... Uh, software i'm using uh wps here but you could use powerpoint or photoshop or whatever um, and you want to type in whatever text you want this is my text uh, and you can format it as you like if you want to make it larger maybe center it change the color make it white um, and you'll see what i've done on this this uh, uh background i've made it the same color as the color of a class in and the reason why I did that is just so I know exactly what it will look like. And then it's very simple. Just copy this, control C, copy it, go into your editor, control V, and here you are. Your text is in. And uh, you can resize it, make it bigger or smaller. If you make it bigger, it will lose quality. But you, maybe you want it right here. And if you hit this lock button, now when I'm in class, this text cannot be moved. It cannot be resized. It cannot be deleted. So that's the benefit of importing text as opposed to just using this. Also, you can change your font. Uh, if you use the, this is only the default class in font. If you want to use more exciting or co interesting, colorful uh, fonts, you can uh, insert them this way. You can also insert pictures. Now, if you want, you can do it the same way in uh, you know, PowerPoint or WPS, whatever you use. You can insert a picture here. Let's say, here's our doggy. Okay, you can insert a picture here and then you can copy and paste that in. The only reason you'd want to do this is if you wanted to put some kind of effects on it. Maybe you want to give it soft edges. We'll give it some soft edges and then I can control C, copy, control V, paste, um, and then it has the soft edges you see here. Uh, otherwise, you can use class and just immediately, directly, and go to this little image icon here and you can insert a picture this way too. Um, so the only reason why you'd use a different program is if you want to change it somehow, alter it somehow. And once again, you can move it around, you can lock it, and then once it's locked, it can't be moved or deleted. Um, so you can decide where you want it. And that's as simple as it is uh, to import text and pictures. So let's go on to the next little bit. This is uh, leaving space. Now, whenever you're preparing an EDB file, you're going to want to think, uh, what do I want? my students to see on this space. If I'm using a PowerPoint and it's going to be big, I might want to you know, leave all of this space empty and then have some text on the side over here. Uh, or if you know you're going to have one person's camera feed down and you, you want it to be about this big, you can do this. This is what I do sometimes. I will make a little box. Okay, I can copy that. Oh, hold on. Copy this, control C. Control. Okay. There we go. Control V. So copy that into here, and then I can uh, resize it maybe however I want. Do, 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 do. A little larger. So you might want to make a little box like this just to kind of remind yourself okay, this is where I want the camera to be, and then I can have. In this part over here, I can have my PDF or my uh, PPT or um, whatever a Word document, whatever you want to have open as you're teaching. So you might want to add a little box to remind you that. 
Um, or if you're going to play something with the this uh, the die, the dice, you're going to want to remember to leave some space. Maybe you have your PowerPoint here, you have some text here. You're going to want to make sure you leave some space here so that your die just doesn't go over the top of whatever else you have. Um, so you might want to actually make a little box like this uh, and put that in there. Resize it to about what the size of a die is, just so you have like a little placeholder and uh, you know exactly um, where that will sit so it's not covering up something else important that you want. So that's one thing to th consider. You always want to leave some space. Uh, if you want to have many students down, you can, you can make many boxes. Maybe you want to use this instead of die, you want it to be people. You could have many students down, so just you can copy and paste these. Right, so you have several different videos at the same time, um, and it's just a, a way to kind of organize. And just, you need something to think about as you're making these is leave the space appropriate, because different tools will have different sizes. And you can test everything here. If you want to use the timer, you got to think, oh, the timer is going to be about this big. All right, and if you want to use the answering de uh, advice here, if you want to do some polling, it's going to be about this big. Okay, a little longer actually when you hand it out. So these are things to consider as you're making your EDB files. The next thing I want to talk about is layering. All right, so let's say you want to use the answering device. You want to ask a lot of questions. I've got three questions prepared here. I'll copy and paste this in. Here's one. I'll get the second one in here. Here's two. And our last one, there we go. So I've copied in this, and you notice the, how they stack over each other. Now, I don't want question three to be on the top, but whatever you enter, the last thing that you up that you upload or you, you put inside of, uh, on the EDB will always be on top. So there is a way to change the layer of this. Okay, so, all right, you're going to want to click on the image and control, and you'll see here are the different options. I can send it to the back with this one, layer bottom. I can send it to the top with this one. I can send it back one. I can send it up one. Okay, so layer up, layer down, layer top, layer bottom. If this is question one. I'm going to want it on the top, right? So once again, control click this, hit this top. Boop. Now it should be the top layer on the entire EDB document. So it'll be over, even over things up, up top here, right? Um, if you want question two, it's still behind question three, right? So I just want to go, maybe I just want to go up one layer. This one, up one layer. Still not top, huh? Up another layer. Okay, now it's above question three. And, oh, oops, I went too far. So there we go. So you can layer things like that. So maybe you want to have several questions and you don't want them to take up, you don't want to have to like scroll down or you don't want them to take up all of the screen space. You can stack things, pictures or, or questions um, <clears throat> like this. And as you go through it, you can just take it and then delete it. Go to the second question, next question. Um, some useful things to think about is if you don't want to bother with the control click and trying to get it at the right layer, there are actually shortcuts you can use, and they are right here. If you do control, shift, and page up, control, shift, page up, you'll see this will go upwards, page down, and we'll send it down. Uh, or if you do control shift home, it'll immediately go to the top. Control shift end, it'll immediately go to the back. So this is some uh, quicker way if you don't want to bother with control clicking and trying to figure out, oh, which one is it? Um, you can just do it this way. Okay, so that's layering. This will be very useful um, because you can save space on your on your blackboard instead of having everything taking up all of it. Maybe you don't need to see everything at the same time. You can stack stuff. You can layer stuff. 
Uh, this is also very important because you cannot change this in class. So you want to get it right in your editor so that when you open it for class, you don't have to worry about trying to make the layers work um, because there's not a good way to do that when you're actually teaching class. Let's go on to this last bit. This is just a few tricks about making EDB files. I just got a couple for you today. Uh, this first one is to make hidden things, which is uh, something like you maybe you want to reveal in an, uh, at a later time or like a hint. So you, I have these two things selected here. I'm going to control C, copy these in, control paste. Uh, control V, excuse me, paste it in. So uh, now I have this. Uh, this is not hidden, right? What do you mean is hidden? Well, the blackboard, although I cannot see it, it extends outward. So I can hide things outward. So all I have to do is just drag this off the side of the screen. So what you might want to do is you have, uh, maybe you, you write a uh, hint or something. You have hints. And then you have these little arrows uh, and you have a question, and the kids don't know. Ah, I'm like, okay, you can pull one hint. So they can pull out one hint. Ah, oh, something hidden, okay. And they can pull it back. Um, so that's one way you could use something like this and kind of hide things off the screen until you need them. Or just like, a, oh, how do I do this problem again? Oh, like this. Okay, cool. And then it doesn't take up so much room. It's kind of like layering things, right? It's a way to save space on the blackboard. So that's the first trick. Second trick is a, a trick that has to do with layering. So if you see, I have a box here that's a solid color, and then I have this text, which is the same color. So I can, uh, let's copy this box in real quick. All right. Nice box. Get that, uh, control C. All right, I have my text in. Now, right now, if I put this over here, it's on the top, but I cannot see it, right? It's the same color. Let's go ahead and add this little circle as well. In this uh, circle, I've made the trans made it somewhat transparent. All right, so now I can I can see through the circle, but uh, if I put this over, I still cannot see this message. It's secret. But if I put this text on the top layer, like so, or remember you can also do Control Shift and Home. All right, it'll be on the top. Now I can use this circle to reveal hidden text. This is a secret message. Okay, so this is just a way to get you thinking. There are there are some clever things I've seen teachers come up with using this strategy, um, whereas you, you know, find the vocabulary words hidden in this picture, or look what animals can you see hidden in the box, uh, and they'll make this like a little magnifying glass and you can like go search for things, right? Uh, so that's another little trick that you can do with layers. And then if you lock these, the kids can't move them or the students can't move them. But you want to keep this one unlocked so that you can move it. Yeah, also remember, if you're going to hide something off the screen, do not lock it or you won't have any way to get at it. right? So keep that unlocked as well. But most things you want to lock or they might accidentally get deleted. So that is two tricks. The final trick is when you're actually going to save your... Um, whatever you've made, this EDB. So maybe I want to do that now. I can go here and click the Save button. I can push Control S and save. But this is the trick. I, I think it's better to push Control Shift and S. It looks just like save saving file, but what happens when you do this, when you hold Control Shift and S, is whatever pictures that you have, in, let's say you have this picture, it's fairly high resolution, right? But maybe you shrink it down. If I hit Control S and save regularly, the picture will be compressed. But if I hit Control Shift S, it won't be compressed. And why that's good is if I want to expand it later, it'll still be high quality. It won't lose quality. So when you Control Shift S and save your EDB files, your pictures will be crisper. They'll take up more space, but everything will look uh, cleaner because uh, it'll be higher quality images. So that is my final tip, and that's all for this first video on how to make EDB files. We'll have several others like it. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments, or uh, if you have any suggestions of what you want the next video or you know what, what's something you're struggling with, we, we would love to hear about that, and we can try to make another video to make that clear. So as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you online.